Um, are you guys, let me ask you this first, just kind of to know where to put my focus. Um, as she said, it's kind of all around English language arts. Are you more interested, concerned, etc., about the uh, like phonics end of things, the foundations of frameworks end of things, a little of both? Where do you want my biggest focus to be? Yeah, I'm good with a little bit of both. Okay, okay, all right. Um, I was going to um, actually work through a lesson um, that, like an introductory lesson and into like a first day or two lesson for the FNF. Oh, sorry. Um, and I will, but I will start with some, I guess, some phonics. Um, but anyway, so I will start with um, a little explanation of the phonics. Um, phonics in second grade is very much like that you find in first grade. Um, the whole point of phonics is to teach rules, and as you can see, this is what we've done so far in second grade back here. Um, it is to teach spelling rules, rules for decoding words, um, to help students be able to increase fluency and to learn to read. Um, those little markings that they come home with on their paper are not, um, I will say, the focus of that paper, however they are very important. Um, if you see little marks off here and there, yeah, we need to be aware of that. Yeah, we need to fix those, try to remember them. Um, they are important, but the biggest issue is, and you'll notice like on phonics assessments and that sort of thing, they always code words and then they have to read them. And you will notice that when they read the words, if they read it correctly or not, counts a lot more points than simply doing the coding. Um, but what the coding tells them is, this is just, it's kind of notes in front of them to help them remember um, how those spelling rules are used, how those sounds work, when do I spell with a C, when do I spell with a K, what makes that vowel long, what makes, um, how do I know when to use two F's or two L's at the end of the word, um, and, and just, again, for decoding. And in here, a lot of times, I will, when we're reading at our little phonics um, decodable readers, or reading a story in F and F or, or any kind of um, passage, anything like that, um, the first thing I tell my kids is to code it. If you get to a word and you don't know it, code it. Um, and I will tell them, don't come to me, try it first. I'm big on trying it first because I just am a firm believer and that's how it should work. Um, so I, I tell them, you know, try it first, use your brain, use the brain God gave you to. Um, to, and the rules and the, the um, phonics that you know to figure out what that word is. Um, they will sit down and code it. Sometimes they'll still come up to my desk and scream the screen, I just can't figure it out, what is this? I'm like, okay, look at your coding. Look what you did. What is, why did you underline that? Why did you put that little mark there? What does that mean? Tell me what those mean. Okay, I know that word now. Okay, I know it. You didn't need me. You didn't need me. You did it all by yourself. So that is what the whole point of the phonics. Um, Again, the rules, if you're interested in any of those, you know, you can look at those. Those stay up in the room at all times. The only time I close that is during an assessment, because obviously it can't be there. Um, but um, I was trying to think if there's anything else. Do you think of anything else I need to add to phonics? It may seem like a lot, like why are they doing this, it but it like comes automatically. They're able to look at the word and just automatically know it because of they've been coding it. And they're able to code fluently. And it, it's amazing. They'll go from not reading to reading all because of that. Right. And to see their faces light up when they do realize what that word is. I'm like, oh, I can do this. Big words even. Um, this gives them a reason to why versus just memorizing. Right, And exactly. that's very important in the foundation of their reading. In spelling, this helps yes, tremendously right. with spelling. Yes, and, and in second grade, like I said, um, the rules that we do, there's not a single rule up there that was not covered in first grade. Actually, it was started in kindergarten. Um, but those rules um, continue on with them through, we do phonics through third grade. In fourth grade, it switches to, voca um, to vocab rather than um, phonics. But they stick with them. The only difference is you're applying them to bigger rules, or to bigger words, I'm sorry. You're applying the rules to bigger words um, to help you decode. Um, so they are, you know, very, very, very beneficial from, you know, the whole, during the whole time of learning to read, um, which, you know, the focus in kindergarten through second grade is learning to read. Um, the, and then in third grade it switches to reading to learn, um, which is 
where we're trying to get to in second grade. Um, and so right now I am pushing, 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 pushing phonics. Um, fluency is big in second grade. Um, you've got to have a fluent reader before you can have a reader who can comprehend and that can learn from what they're reading. If they're spending too much time, too much focus decoding words, they're not going to comprehend what they're reading. So we've got to get the fluency before we can get the comprehension. Um, so that's the beginning of that. Then we add in grammar. Um, grammar, our strategies for writers curriculum comes with some grammar um, curriculum. In my opinion, it's a little weak, so I've chosen to add to it. Um, I actually downloaded a couple of um, uh, workbooks from online that um, I feel like are great supplements. Um, and I supplement with that a lot in the classroom. That just gives them more than one day's practice with something. Um, we've talked about, you know, a sentence is a complete thought. We've gone all the way back to the basics, and we're working up to um, diagraphing a sentence. Um, and, you know, the parts of a sentence, the predicate, the, uh, the um, subject, um, so that they can begin not only to, to read and to begin to comprehend what they're saying, but how to take what they're um, what they're learning and put it into words, um, which is harder than you think <laughs> sometimes, uh, can be. Um, but all that kind of goes together. So we, we will work on, you know, we work on noun, verb, adjective every day when we do Foundations and Frameworks vocabulary cards. Um, we do, uh, like I said, uh, subject, predicate, um, proper nouns, punctuation, quotation marks, apostrophe, comma, you know, all that good stuff. Um, we're we've been doing contractions right now in phonics, which um, they really enjoyed in here. Um, and, you know, I always give them a bonus where well, you can read the word, but what does it mean? What two words make that word? What letters are left out? Why did you leave those out? Um, and just really try to ask the why question. I like to ask why. And then um, that takes us into the foundations and frameworks uh, where they're actually reading and working on fluency and comprehension. Um, fluency involves several different things. Um, it is the speed at which they read, it is the um, fluidity at which they read, correctness of words, the number of words they can read in a minute, um, the, you know, recognizing punctuation, um, uh, intonation in their voice, you know, recognizing there's an exclamation mark there, that's exciting, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and so we focus on, as we read, we focus on, you know, identifying all those things as well, not adding words or omitting words. Um, and in here, a lot of, you know, attention to punctuation. Uh, we tend to kind of skip over that a lot and just keep right on going. Um, so we will actually, you know, we've actually said pause, or we've actually said, you know, let's get excited, or, you know, different things like that to get them to stop and recognize that punctuation. Um, the foundations and frameworks, am I talking to you, Pastor, you guys are good? Good. Questions so far? Okay. Um, the foundations and frameworks, um, curriculum. I have two children who, one who has already finished with it and one who is still in it. Um, and I do see the, the benefit of it in the long run. Um, sometimes I, you know, be the first to admit it seems tough um, as you're going through it. It is tough. It is tough. Um, and, and, you know, that's what we're about. We set our standards high, we set the bar high, and um, we, we push the kids to do what they can do. Now, are we going to push them to the point of, you know, um, whatever, giving up, putting the wall up, stressing them out? Yeah, you know, no, that's not our goal. Uh, but I will tell you just a little uh, personal testimony real quick. Um, my daughter's in eighth grade this year, and she um, started Foundations and Frameworks in fourth grade. And somewhere I went wrong, and she hates to read. So um, she just has never been one to love to enjoy sitting down and reading. Um, but she, you know, went through the Foundations of Frameworks curriculum. It, she was in it from fourth through seventh grade. Um, and it was tough. You know, I'm not going to lie. It was tough. Um, but how did she come out on the other end? Huge. Huge. Does she love reading? No. She still doesn't love reading, unfortunately. But she, um, to hear her, like she brought home a book um, a few weeks ago, and that she a story that she had to read, and it had some other language, I don't know, it wasn't really like hillbilly, I don't know what it was, but some other language in it, and she was reading it, and you know, just spitting out, like, what does it mean, what is this, you know, and I'm like, what, you know, what are you talking about, and you know, trying to follow what she was saying, and, and the depth that she took it to just blew me away, you know, it wasn't just like, here's your characters, here's your setting, here's your, 
um, you know, here's what happened. It was, and if this would have happened, then this would have happened, and, and this would have changed that. And around that time, this was going on, and, this, and I'm just going, okay, whatever you say, you know. Um, so it's just amazing to watch, to have seen now the end product of where that comes out, because it was a struggle going through it. Yes. And I will say, we recently got to look at the Terra Nova testing from middle school, was it middle school? Yeah. And the reading was off the charts at this school compared to any other school in the state, in the in our region. region, it was off the chart, and it's because of that now. Right, right. Um, so a typical day for us would look like, um, as far as like um, where our unit begins, and I was going to show a little video and just kind of walk you through that, and you know, we might do that if you guys want to actually experience it, but just to give you a little background on how it works. Um, as, a, as we start a new unit, the unit is introduced through the use of what's called an experience. And I know a lot of this you guys have already heard, so I'm sorry if you're hearing it again. But that experience is um, sometimes hands-on, sometimes student-involved, well, always student-involved, but sometimes hands-on um, more so than others. Um, sometimes it is just, it is a reference point is what, it, what we want it to be. We want it to be a reference point that they can refer back to and that we can refer back to in class and say, do you remember when we did this? Do you remember when we did that, when we talked about this? So we always start with an experience. Our first unit that we did in here was um, a sequence of events, and the one that we have just started is retelling. They are very, very similar. <laughs> in fact, you use the same visual tool, which is up on the board over here. Um, but basically, for the sequence of events, we talked about, and I'm sure you probably heard about it at home, <laughs> um, we made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And we talked about um, the steps that you follow to make that peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, we talked about everything down to if you don't wash your hands first, then your bread's dirty, don't eat it. Uh, we talked about um, the important things versus the non-important, which is why you see the X on event two and sequence of events. It is important that you sequence the events in the order that they happened, but you want to eliminate those details that don't really matter, that nobody needs to know to fully understand that story. Um, so when we were making our peanut butter and jelly sandwich, we, we talked about, well, we've got to have all the, all the materials out first. And we, you know, we forgot a few things and went back and had to get them. Um, and then we talked about the things that don't really matter. Does it matter if I put the peanut butter or the jelly on first? No, it doesn't matter. But I have to put the sandwich together before I can eat a sandwich. I have to put the two pieces of bread together before I can eat a sandwich. You remember that? Yeah. And we talked about... Um, you know, even all the way to cleaning up. But we went through every single event. We talked about what was important, what was not. You can't make the sandwich if you don't have the bread. You can't spread the peanut butter if you don't have a knife. Um, and just, you know, different things about how it went. Um, then we talked about how we um, experience sequence of events in everyday life, in everything you do. You know, in the mornings when you get up, what do you do first? What do you do next? What do you do next? What do you do next? Um, when you come to school, you know, uh, what, is, what is the order of our day? Where do we go first? And of course that depends on the day with our special schedules and that sort of thing. But where do you go first? Where do you go next? Uh, then you have lunch. Then you go outside. Then, you, you know, we talked about all of that and how you face it on a daily basis. Um, when you get dressed, you can't put your shoes on before you put your pants on. Your pants are going to get stuck, right? Yeah. So um, we talked about that and gave that kind of some life application. Um, and then we went on and we, um, we talked about the story of the three little pigs. Um, and we talked about, um, you know, the sequence of that story, what happened first, what happened next. We eliminated those unimportant details again um, and focused on the fact that these three pigs went out and built houses. They were trying to see who could build the best house. And then the big bad wolf comes along and starts blowing them down. He gets to the brick house, can't do it. They're all safe. He comes, tries to come down the chimney. He lands in the fire or the pot of boiling water goes back up the chimney and all is well. Um, and uh, the story that we read talked a little bit about how in the beginning they were talking about their homes and what they were going to build them out of and all that. And we said, you know, does that really matter in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things? What was the goal or what was the problem of this story? The goal was, or the problem, was that these pigs built their houses and they built them out of three different things. And then the big bad wolf could blow some of them down, but he couldn't blow others down. So the, um, the problem was resolved in the fact that the third pig built his house out of bricks and the house could not be blown down. So the problem was solved by, by that. Um, so we, we, we did that and then we did a little activity where they had strips that had parts, events of the story on them and they had pictures with them and they had to cut the strips apart and then sequence them in order. 
And even that was a little bit harder than you would think at this age because it does require them to really think back and recall the whole story and think about, um, you know, just, just think about the order that the events occurred. I mean, it, it really calls that, that rec really makes you use that recollection, that recalling, retelling. Um, and we had to, you know, a few of us, we had to redo it a few times, and, but we got it. We got it, we figured it out, and, you know, they were happy. So we had two points of reference to look back at, and that was the three little pigs, as well as the peanut butter jelly sandwich. Um, and then we moved on to day one. Um, and day one was the introduction of how we are going to do sequence of events in here. Um, and so we introduced, I don't have my pattern statement, you know what, it's right here. Right here. Um, this is our pattern statement process questions, all that for sequence of events. The pattern statement, uh oh, just lost something on the back. The pattern statement is used um, as your, your all around focal point. It, it tells you, it's almost like a definition of what is this story about. Okay, what is the, or what is this unit about? This one, as I said, is sequence of events. And our pattern statement states that there's an order to how things happen, but not everything that happens is important. Um, and that's exactly what we want them to understand. Again, that's why we have the second block marked out over here. Because we want them to sequence those events, but take out the details that don't really matter. Get rid of those distracting details. Those things that the author put in there to entertain us, to um, add, you know, just add excitement to the story, to keep us interested in it, and that sort of thing. So, each day we work, we talk about the pattern statement. Um, and that's where, our, again, where our focus lies. Then we would um, do a read aloud on that first day. And basically during a read aloud, I will read a book. Um, sometimes I'll choose to show them the picture, sometimes I'll choose not to. Um, and as I'm reading, I basically talk through the story. And as if, I, I try to put my, I, what I want them to do is see me modeling that, see me reading that story, talking through it, asking myself these questions as I'm reading, because that's what they are going to do. That's what's going to be expected of them as they read through their book. Um, so I'm up here, I'm reading the story, and I'm asking myself as I go, okay, what happened first? So I, I recall, you know, back what happened first. What happened next? What happened next? What happened next? Does this event relate to the main character's goal or problem? Well, as we said in The Three Little Pigs, the goal of the story, or the problem in the story was the houses were getting blown down. It was solved by the third pig building his house out of brick and not being able to be blown down. Does this event make an important character change his thinking or actions? Um, is this event important enough that, um, that it changed the outcome of the story? It changed what a character did or what they thought or, you know, again, the, the outcome of the story. Um, why did the author include this event? And that's what I was talking about with the X, you know, to add interesting details or to affect the story's outcome. Does someone need to know about this event to understand the story? What is the story's problem or goal and how was it solved or reached? And then, the, um, have I included enough information on all story events so that connections are clear? As you move down these questions, they obviously get harder and require much greater detail in the thought process. Um, the first few questions are where you get your, basically, your um, meat subjective. You know, if you can answer these questions, I'm sorry, can you see it? If you can answer these questions on that uh, visual tool and as you go throughout that story, that is our, that's our biggest and our main goal. When you start getting down into five and six, you get into, um, comes after my subjective, it just left me. The next level up, I have to look back at my rubric. But uh, you get into the next level up of um, after meets objective. So again, each, each level you get to on the rubric, you are, you're getting up to a higher level of thinking. Seven and eight is where you're getting up to your exemplary. Um, to where, you know, this, you want to be able to answer one through eight to get an A. Proficient, thank you. All these questions and been able to think this deeply and this concrete throughout the story. It's very hard. It's very hard. I'm not going to lie. It's very hard. Um, it takes a lot of, um, it takes a lot of thinking, comprehension, processing um, each of these steps. You know, I look, and my son is in fourth grade, and I look at his visual tool and I mean, it's just, it's this massive thing, and it's got all these lines going off of it, and he understands what he's doing. It's awesome. 
Um, but it, it does require a lot of thinking. Our visual tool for this one is very simple. Um, but, you know, it does really take them to that higher level of thinking to where they can completely tear that text apart and get things out of it that I know I, you know, as an elementary student, never got out of it. Um, and it's just amazing once they start moving on down this, you know, to hear them answering these questions and um, processing that information. And I've even had a couple that have, that have done that next step of being able to well, if he hadn't done this, then he could have done this. And if he had done this, then this would have happened. And then he could have, and I'm like, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And that's what we want, that thinking outside of the box. Um, so day two is the read aloud and working through it and kind of modeling the way that we want them to read while they're reading the story. Asking ourselves these questions, thinking through it, talking aloud. Well, if he said that or if he did that, then he must be, um, you know, he must be a really nice guy or wow, look at what he's got on, you know, he must be some kind of doctor, or he must be, you know, let's, let's wonder what he does, or wonder what he has to do with the story. Um, but just, you know, continuing to ask themselves those questions. And then we fill in the visual tool as we go, or throughout, throughout the reading and as we finish. Uh, we will actually write that on the board. It is all student participation at that point, and we fill in our visual tool. And once we get everything filled in, we go back and we talk about it. And we ask ourselves each one of these questions. Did we answer these questions? Did we answer what happened first, what happened next, what happened? That's the easy part. Then we ask ourselves, does, do each of these events, we look at each one, and we ask, does it relate to the main character's goal or problem? And we simply work through each of these questions, and I won't, I won't bore you guys with each one of those, but um, we simply work through those by answering those questions as we fill out the visual tool, and that is all demonstrated up here on the board. It's all student input. Um, with guidance from me, but it is their, it is their information. Um, and with the Foundations of Frameworks, because it is reading, um, some students will interpret it different ways, uh, which is what makes it interesting because there's not really a, I hesitate to say there's not really a right or wrong answer, but there's not really a right or wrong answer. Um, if a child gives you an event or gives you an idea and they can justify it in the reading, then you know, I can't argue with them. You know, sure, point, point was taken, you know. Um, but, if, but, but the point is that they have to be able to justify it. They have to be able to support it and say why they believe this to be true or why they said this or why they chose this. And as long as they can do that, I can't say their answer's wrong. It's all in how they interpret the story. Um, what I have to look at is um, are they able to sequence the events? Are they able to get rid of those events that are not important? And how far into this higher level thinking are they getting? Um, and then as we move into day one, with each unit we have, it lasts about three weeks, about 15 days in here. I will say it fluctuates a little bit. Um, this unit that we're in actually now will not last the full 15 days. Um, the kids are divided up into smaller groups. I've got two groups going in here right now. Um, and they're reading two different books. Um, one of the books is a little shorter than the other one, so that book, uh, I will tack another one on to their unit. They will actually go through two books, whereas the other group is only going to go through one book because it's a little longer. Um, and the books do come at different levels. Um, all of our books are over here on the shelf if you're interested in looking through or, you know, whatever. Um, but they, they do come at different levels um, for each um, unit. And so we put them together and they read. We start with the vocabulary word. There are seven vocabulary words per unit in second grade. Those vocabulary words come straight from the stories that we're reading. Um, the reason we do that is obvious, um, because number one, it builds vocabulary. Number two, it helps them understand what they're reading. Um, one of our books is called The Very Boastful Kangaroo. Well, boastful is a big word, you know, for a second grader. So we broke it down into the word boast, and we talked about what it means. And hopefully you've seen that in their vocabulary um, baggie and their binders. Uh, but we, we put the word on the board. I draw the vocabulary card out on the board, which I'm sure you guys have seen it, but just in case. Um, you know, the, our vocabulary cards look like this. And in the middle, we write our vocabulary word, which for this one, our first word for this one was boast. And then we talk about the part of speech, the part of speech that it is. We always review daily just as, a, as part of our grammar. I'm writing really fast, guys. I really don't write this message. You know, a noun is a person or a place, or a thing, and then we review, you know, what an adjective is, what a verb is, because all of our vocabulary words are, most of them we try to use verbs, but we will have some nouns and some adjectives. Um, 
in, as far as you know the type of words we choose. Um, so we talk about the part of speech, and we um, I, I usually will give them the definition, which this one I believe was. Um, I'm going to say one who thinks highly of themselves. That's not the exact words, but one who thinks highly of yourself. That's not the exact words we used, but um, give them the definition, and then we talk about, well, what does that mean? What is an example of that? What does that look like to, to boast? Um, and, and they, you know, Use that definition, and they'll give me examples. If they're wrong, we'll you know pull them back on cue. If they're not, then I mean, if they are, then we will you know we'll talk as far as they want to talk and as deep as they want to talk about it. We give examples um, and that sort of thing. We talk about keywords. Um, I wish I had my real definition. Um, we talk about keywords that they use uh, that the, the definition gives us to help us decide: is this a noun, or is it a verb, or is it an adjective? Um, in this word, in this definition, we would use the word thinks. One who thinks. If you're thinking, what are you doing? Or what's going on? What is it? Tell me. A verb. A verb. Why? Because you're doing something. Because you're doing something. What are you doing? Thinking. You're thinking. You're thinking. So we know that this word is a verb because you are thinking. Good job. All right. Then we go on to, um, to, to do a sentence about it, to write a sentence using the word. We try to touch on every point of that word we can, part of speech, definition, using it in a sentence, applying it, um, and that sort of thing. So I think the one we used for this was, um, oh, it was about the goalie. The goalie um, will boast, no, what was the word we used? I'm not good on this part, guys. Um, but we used the sentence basically talking about how a goalie that was really good at, at doing his job would boast after the game. Do you remember what it was? I think it was so, the goalie part was at the end because yeah. I remember that from the vocabulary card. Yeah. Something about the did, that you did you boast. Yeah. So anyway, the goalie would boast about his skills after the game. We talked about how he would walk around saying, nobody scored a goal on me because I'm the best and I did a great job and, you know, that sort of thing. And then we drew, we always draw a picture. Um, and they always like my drawings because they're always stick figures. <laughs> and I drew, you know, for this one I kind of drew a little stick figure with hair and I put like little beams around him like he's blowing, he's better than anybody else. Some of them will take it even further and they drew the goal, they drew a soccer ball, they drew... Um, little stars around them, you know, anything to make this person look like they are boastful. Um, they re this is what I enjoy seeing because this really tells um, how well they understand it. And they get very detailed in these pictures to the point that I'm like, okay, we have got to move on. <laughs> um, but those are really, really, really neat to see. So we do our vocabulary card, and then we move on to the day's reading. Um, the students will be assigned a range of anywhere from uh, three or four to seven or eight pages of reading to do in their story. We break it up into chunks. Um, and they are to read just that section. They're not allowed to look ahead. They're not allowed to read ahead. Um, but they read just that section and fill out the visual tool on it. So um, they work in their spec logs. Have you guys seen a spec log? Are y'all familiar with that at all? Okay. Alright, so this is what we use when we are working, and to give you an idea of what they are asked to do, they open it up to a page that looks like this. And when they're filling this out, the first thing they do is put their book title, the pages they're reading, comprehension focus, which right now is retelling, and then the date. And then this big area over here is where they do their visual tool. This is what they're drawing. The only difference in retelling is um, that they don't actually do the marking out of box two, because since we've already done sequence of events, we hope that they're not doing this anymore. They don't need this anymore. They're past this. They're able to get rid of those non-important events without having to write it down and exit out. They're already, they've already moved to the next thought process. So, but the curriculum does use the same visual tool. So they're writing out and drawing um, about the section that they have read, that visual tool just as you see it. Um, as many squares as they need. Um, 
one event per square, and that, that, that's pretty much what they're doing right here. These two lines down here, they have to write an I learned statement. Um, it could be, I learned that a kangaroo carries its baby in the pouch, which they most already know, but it has to be something they learned from the reading. Um, they are allowed to use the vocabulary word if they were not aware of what it meant, which that's why we choose the ones we choose. Um, if they use the vocabulary word, they can't just say, I learned what boast means. They have to tell me, I learned that boast means to brag about oneself, to talk about oneself. They have to show me that you learned this. Then over here on these pages, they are drawing pictures of these important events that they've included over here. Again, they're touching on every part of seeing it, tasting it, smelling it, touching it, you know, that sort of thing. But they're drawing those pictures of these important events over here. This space is used um, for a variety of things. In here, we start out using it. Every day, they're required to write their pattern statement. Um, they can either pull their little paper, some of them leave it in their binder, some of them leave it at home. I tell them either way is fine. But they'll pull that out and use it, or they can refer to this. And they, um, they are to write word for word, with correct spelling, with correct punctuation, with correct capitalization and that sort of thing, their visual tool. I mean, their pattern statement. There is no reason I tell them for it to be misspelled or anything to be incorrect in this because it's right here in front of them. And when we do things incorrect that are right here in front of us, we're lazy. We're not checking our work. We're not doing our job and doing it well. Um, so they copy that down, and that helps. You know, when they're doing that every day, it helps, you know, just kind of embed that in their brain and help them really think about it and focus on it. As we move on into the unit, we will start, we will move away a little bit from copying the pattern statement and we will start copying process questions. Again, just to keep those at the forefront of their mind as well. But they will copy, that is all copy work here, and that is done for several reasons. Like I said, number one, just to kind of keep it fresh on their mind um, and keep fresh on their mind the questions they need to use, what they need to be thinking about while, thinking about while they're reading. Um, and also just because, again, it practices that reading, it practices the handwriting, it practices punctuation, it practices all of that. Um, copying from board to paper, um, which at this age is, you know, can be difficult too. It's easy to miss a word or leave a letter out or something like that. So that's a good skill, you know, for them to practice on as well. So that's what they do in this area. And then um, on day... Okay, we've done the experience on day one, day two, we've done the read aloud. Day three, they've worked in their spec logs for the first time and done their first vocabulary card. On day four, we start having reading groups. Um, my reading groups in second grade at the very beginning, we, we are, our goal is to meet with, if we've got three reading groups, our goal is to meet with all three of them in one day. That does not happen in here in the beginning um, because uh, they need more time than that. They need more time with that and then that. I've met with Ms. Bowen, talked to her about that, gotten her opinion on that. She said, absolutely. Um, but they need uh, more time than I had. I need to be able to spend more time with each group rather than trying to squeeze two or three groups into a small amount of time to feel like they really understand what they're doing. Um, so we have reading group. We um, take turns and read orally what they read um, the day before. It's at your, when you have a reading group, you're actually meeting about the day before's work. Um, we read a lot. We go around and read, take turns reading out loud. Um, read through the section that they had to read, talk about any questions they might have, work on any words they might have um, not been able to read or decode well, um, and that sort of thing. And then we go over the visual tool. Each person goes around and shares. And any corrections that need to be made are done with colored pencil. And that is um, to help them see um, you know, what, what they could have done differently or what should have been added or what they left out or what they should have said differently. Um, and just add any, anything they might have just forgotten about or skipped over. Um, and that also helps us as we are grading. Um, while I'm meeting with one group, the other group is sitting at their desks working on that day's work. And then we'll flip-flop the next day and the other group will sit and work and I'll meet with the other group. Does that make sense? Um, and we pretty much go on throughout, go on just like that throughout the unit. At the very end of the unit on day 12, we do something called intellectual art, which is where the whole group that is doing a story comes together, and they have to work together to create. Voices going, I'm sorry. They have to work together to create a big visual tool, and basically they are creating the big version of this that covers the entire story from beginning to end. And again, using these questions, making sure they've eliminated, making sure they've given what was important, making sure they've given enough detail, making sure in the aspect of retelling that they have sat down 
and they have retold every event in that story to where if someone else has never heard this story, they can understand and enjoy the story. They've told it with expression. They've not left out important events. They've not bored the reader with all the stuff that didn't really matter. Um, and they're able to, you know, that reader is able, or listener, is able to fully understand that story and enjoy it. Um, then day 14 and 15 are assessments. Um, day one, or day 14 is skill and vocab, which is in second grade, it starts out as orally um, restating the pattern statement and two identified process questions, which I identify for them. Um, and then they have the seven vocabulary words. They're either, right now, they're matching them word to definition. Um, they have to tell how the visual tool helped them, how did it guide their thinking. And then they have to actually draw the visual tool and label it, spelled correctly, and that sort of thing. And then on day 15, they will be given a small passage, a much, much shorter passage than what we've been working on that they've never seen before, and they have to draw and fill in the visual tool on that passage. And that's what we call a performance assessment, and that's how we assess and evaluate how well did they learn this concept. Um, and then we start the unit over, or we start another unit. Um, I know that's a lot of information. Is there anything else you can think of? It's a big step up from what they did in first grade. <laughs> it is a big step up. Because in first grade, step up. they will focus on half of that, that pattern statement and only the first two questions. So they're taking all that in, in second grade. Yeah. So it's a big step up. It is up. a big step up. And it's an even bigger step up when they go over there, which is what we will work to towards the end of the year. By the end of the year, they will be writing the pattern statement with no, no errors in spelling, no errors in punctuation. They will be writing the two process questions with no errors. They will be um, still drawing and labeling the visual tool. Vocabulary will be more rather than matching, which is, you know, a little bit of memorization here. I can match a word and definition, no problem. But they will be applying that word. They'll be filling in a blank in a sentence. They will be using it in a sentence. And they can't say, um, I will boast after the game. Well, what does boast mean? Boast could mean a million things. You know, tell me what that word means. They have to prove they know what it means. So it does take it up a big step. Um, the goal also by, honestly, by after Christmas, um, you know, by the time we come back from after Christmas, is that all of this is done independently. Um, in here, we did our entire first unit, whole class. Um, our entire first book was done orally together, um, where we read aloud, wrote the visual tool up on the board, filled it in, and they basically just copied it down. And of course, we used their input for filling in the visual tool. Um, the second story that we did in the first unit, I gave them a little bit more responsibility in it and had them, we still did the reading orally, but then I had them um, try to come up with and sequence the events on their own. Um, we did not do the first unit in our spec logs. We did it on a big piece of construction paper, which I still have back here. And I gave them little squares because it's a lot, that very first unit, to try to draw my square, fit everything in there, and they just they get overwhelmed by it all. So I cut little squares and gave it to them. We did it on a big old piece of construction paper so they had plenty of room, but it still gave them the concept and the idea of here's the amount of space I have, here's what I have to do. Um, and again, as we continue to work through this, more and more independence will be pushed because by the time they get over here, from the very beginning of the year, they are completely and solely independent. What that means is they have to be fluent readers. They have to be able to read you know, a certain number of, minute, of words per minute. Um, and they have to be able to comprehend what they're reading to be able to, to do that and keep up. Um, so we push, push, push in here. <laughs> um, we push, push, push in here, a lot of reading. Um, which is why we also do the, the weekly reading logs. Those are extremely important. Um, honestly, uh, I decided to put a grade on those this year because when I've required it in the past, they just don't do it. Um, so, um, because I feel that it is so important, um, I put a grade on that. Um, and I mention their names a lot as Ms. Ellenberg as, as our principal and my boss and Mrs. Bowen as our curriculum person. Um, they're always my go-to people. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's just a very, very, very important skill um, that's, that's got to be, it's got to be met. It's got to be met. <laughs> by what? Backed by research. Backed by research, yes. Um, and, you know, it's, it's one thing to say, hey, well, you know, Joe can, you know, well, he's in kindergarten and he can already read a third grade book. Well, that's great. You know, that's great. But can they comprehend what they're reading? Can they comprehend what they're reading? That's where 
the stumbling block comes. Um, you know, my son, perfect example, was, was like that. I mean, he could read, um, speed read. He could, um, you know, read two or three grade levels above where he was at, but I would ask him questions. What did you read? Who was in the story? What happened? What about that? And he was like, huh? <laughs> you know, so they've got to be able to read and comprehend what they're reading. If there's the comprehension is not there, then we're, you know, we're five steps back. Um, so they've got to pick up that fluency. They've got to stop pausing to decode words and be able to decode them quickly and immediately and then be able to recall what they've read in order to be able to do the foundations and frameworks, which is our goal. That's our end goal. Um, so again, as we keep trekking along, we will keep working um, as whole group. Reading groups never stop. That'll be all year. Uh, we will continue doing some whole group work, but that, that step to independence will, will come and it will come quick. Um, and because I have to have them ready to be over here, and like I said, they take off from the very beginning completely independent. Um, so that is my goal and why I'm pushing reading so much. Um, the Reading A to Z program um, that I messaged a lot of you guys about, or the whole class about, um, has been hu a huge benefit. Um, we are beginning to incorporate that more and more um, as far as uh, our reading and our reading together and picking up our fluency um, and you're going to see even more of that. I'm probably going to start sending some of those home um, probably after right after Christmas when we turn from Christmas break um, and just again you know push that. They're awesome too because they have vocabulary in the back. Most of them do. A lot of them have comprehension questions right there that you can ask um, your child as you're going which follows along a lot of this. Just keep you know keep these papers at home, or like I said, we're in their binder if you'd rather leave it in there, whatever's most convenient. But the papers that have this stuff on them are so, 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 so important. Um, and as you're reading, or as your child is reading, you know, each night, make sure they're reading um, at a level that they can comprehend. At a level that they can comprehend and they can retell to you what they read. If they're not able to retell you what they read, take it back a notch. And that's okay. And that's okay. All right? That is so important. It is okay. Um, they will get there, but they're not going to get there if you're pushing them to do something they can't do. They've got to, they've got to learn it. They've got to get there. Um, so, you know, take it back a few steps. Even if you have to take it back to a, you know, what I call a kindergarten book, a cardboard book. And you have to read it through and you have to take it one step at a time. And then the next time, you know, go up a little bit harder and take it one step at a time. And then just keep increasing that. And that's what's going to help build the fluency and the level of comprehension that we are looking for and ask these questions. Sit down with them. Ask these questions. Retell me the story. Who was in it? What was the setting? What was the, who were the characters? Um, what did that character look like? What did that character do? Um, you know, all of those, all of those deep questions that can just really jog their mind and get them thinking rather than just, oh, good job, you read it. Um, because it means, it means so much. It means so much. Any questions? How how many days a week when you're in a unit do you actually get to this? And like how much time does it take? I'm sure it fluctuates, but like when you're doing it, because it seems like a lot. Like, it is a is lot. Is this like half a day? Or no. Because it feels like it. It does some days. <laughs> no, it is actually, honestly, the time, the recommended time allowance for this program is one hour, but that is to include our finals. But are you doing we, it every school day, or is mm -hmm. it really, okay, so this mm -hmm. is like a core thing that gets... But I will tell you, we don't, right now, and again, and the more we push that independence and the better they get with the fluency and the more independent they get, we will get there. Mm -hmm. Right now, honestly, I'm lucky if I get through this part in an hour and 15 minutes. Um, does that mean we're missing other things? No, because you're always using phonics when you're doing it. We're always coding words. We're always decoding words. We're always um, applying those exactly. We're multitasking. Did we do the phonics lesson? Not so much, but we did phonics. You know, we did phonics. Um, we are actually progressing very well in our phonics in here right now. Um, we are right where we should be as far as where the year is. I really want to pick up the pace with this. Um, a whole lot, which again is why I'm pushing the reading. Um, really, 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 really need independent readers, um, which is, you know, again, can't say it enough why I'm pushing reading so much. Um, but uh, it, it's a tough, it's a tough curriculum. It's a tough curriculum. But again, you know, I see the benefits, I see the end picture, I see where they get with it. 
And I mean, the, to, to look at the scores, you know, you look and it's like one year we're here and the next year we're here. I mean, it's that drastic of a difference um, since the, you know, the F and F curriculum has been in place. Um, and it's, you know, it's learned. It's like I said, it's just... How do the kids react to it? Do, is it enjoyable for them? Or um, does it seem difficult? It is. It, it depends. It depends. You know, here again. Um, Claire was only in it for a few years, and she will tell you as soon as it was over, she said, can I burn my spec logs? <laughs> uh, you know, Bryson, on the other hand, really enjoys it. He, but, you know, he's also, he's a very critical and analytical thinker. Um, so those that are really into reading, those that are really into challenging their mind, are going to enjoy it, and they're going to do well. Those that don't want to have to work hard, those that don't want to have to put as much effort in, are not going to do as well, not going to enjoy it as well. Because it does challenge their mind. Um, so I can tell you in here, I have a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. I've got some that seem to really enjoy it. They're always the first ones done. They're always, you know, and then I've got some that are like, well, you know. So it, it's, it's really all over the spectrum as far as that's concerned. Any other questions? About any aspect, whether it's F and F or um, uh, phonics? Or grammar, or spelling, or you're talking about message about spelling today, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I was cleaning off my desk, and I, I, there it was. So, but it, like I said, it worked out good anyway with being out tomorrow and then having a special chapel. And we're actually two lists ahead right now in spelling. So, it's all right. So, anybody else? Any other questions? I know that was a lot of information I just threw at you in a really big hurry. Um, that's what they told me I had to do, so. <laughs> so.